So today we are here with Luce, if you guys remember him. Um, he's going to be competing this year in D1GP and uh, this is what his car currently looks like. <laughs> What's up guys? We're going to take a look at his car in a little bit but this is Boostar headquarters and this is where all of the reverse knuckles are made. And uh, I thought it'd be a really cool video to show you guys how knuckles are made here in Japan. Uh, these are generally, like this is pretty much the knuckle, the go-to knuckle that a lot of people use on their, whether it's street drift cars, to, yeah, competition, to track, all that kind of stuff, right? Yes. Cool. So why don't you um, tell us, Ruse, a little bit about your knuckle, like what makes it good? Just and... give us like a, a little bit of a rundown. Yeah, I, we made this knuckle with around five, six years ago mm -hmm. when I first competed uh, drift racing like uh, Chihosen, mm -hmm. Chihosen, Gakudori and stuff. Wow, Gakudori, yeah. And uh, my partner, uh, Mr. Kabe, he made a good knuckle for me. Yep. And now we start selling from two years ago. Okay. So that's really cool. So this product, uh, they're kind of known as like the green knuckles overseas. Yes. If you've got, normally these get painted green. Um, and this is everything that you've got this week to get done, right? Yeah, we just got this new knuckles from the customers. Mm -hmm. We just open it and we just done the cut. Yeah. So one thing that a lot of people um, worry about, obviously for international customers, is it's kind of a real pain to take your knuckles off and ship them all the way to Japan yes. to then have them cut and made and then shipped back, right? Yes. And do you have a solution for that? Um, we usually, for overseas, mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't get the trade-in. Okay, the trade-in, yeah. Yeah, we're just using this T-Max knuckle. Yep. So this is, we can buy it for brand new. Brand new, yeah. like factory, factory stock knuckle. This is not the original OEM, but yeah. this is really high quality and this is really strong. Yeah. So we're just using this knuckle for overseas mm -hmm. and cut and weld and ship. Okay, so can I have a quick look at that? So this is made by D-Max here. Now it's not made by Nissan, but it's the same spec. So this is just as good as an OEM knuckle, right? Yeah, for overseas, this is way cheaper. Than, yeah, yeah just send back. shipping it shipping and it. going backwards and forwards. So yes. if you can't do the exchange, you can do that. And this is what the OEM knuckle looks like, right? Nice, long, and kind of yeah. no good for angle, right? Yeah, and uh, just the point is this is quite old knuckles mm. so I have like a lot of lasties mm -hmm. so uh, <laughs> you're okay keep yeah, going my opinion is I think it's better to use this new brand new knuckles yeah well so we're trying to change it mm. from last year okay but we still have a trade in, in Japanese customers yeah so right now we're using this old knuckles mm -hmm. we paint and use that oh okay the sandblaster yeah like one of these, like a bad condition knuckles, yeah. you just use the sand Okay. and clean in it and yeah. weld it properly. Okay. So, why don't you explain the process a little bit of, of like what goes into making the knuckles? Um, usually I go Nikko circuit and uh, Mobara, Mobara mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, Fuji Speedway mm -hmm. is my main track. Mm -hmm. So, this is kind my <laughs> like what feels good to you for me is it didn't locked yeah uh, so like no binding in the no steering binding have a lot of angles yeah and when you like uh, slew it throw it yeah yep. can still handle hold the like, hold the handle. angle okay yeah because yeah. like a lot of uh cut and shut knuckles the biggest issue is binding because you know and the solution to that is to move the rack forward right but no one wants to do that you don't have to do it you yeah just stand with a normal leg position yeah with standard uh standard tension lock uh, i mean like a straight tight straight okay yeah straight tight you can just use a straight tight and you don't have to do like a muzukashi stuff Okay, so difficult stuff. Difficult stuff. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to do To it. get a lot of angle, yeah. Yes. So, does the process of making the knuckles, I guess, is you've got to cut these off, shorten them. Yeah, we're just going to cut. Mm -hmm. And uh, we put the... How do I say? Uh, I think it's easy to show you. Okay. How we're going to weld it and how we're going to 
build this knuckles. Okay, cool. So what we'll do is we'll show you, but the biggest thing that I like is I like seeing jigs because that means stuff's done properly. And not only do they have jigs for welding, because this is what they're using the jigs here to weld the knuckles, but they've got jigs for cutting too, which is really cool. But uh, yeah, as you can see, they've got a whole bunch of knuckles here already pre-cut. You can see there's a big piece missing there. Like if we grab this knuckle here and compare it to this one here, you can see there's a lot already missing from there to there. So the knuckles are gonna be normal. What I think we're gonna see is this is gonna be dropped lower and, and then it's gonna be shortened by being that big chunk cut out in the middle there. So should be pretty cool. So I hope you guys are pumped and excited to see this process. Um, it's not something that a lot of companies here in Japan are very open about. You know, a lot of people think there's a special formula to get it right and stuff, but really it just comes down to handling, feeling, and a lot of seat time. And that is one thing that Duse has a lot of, and that is seat time. So when he builds a knuckle and changes it and everything, which is what they're working on now with the new revision, is a lot of testing and seat time goes into them before he knows that they feel right and he's happy for those to go to the customer. So pretty much today's video, we're gonna go through and show you the entire process of these knuckles being made. I'm gonna tell you where to get them at the end. It's not sponsored or anything like that. I just wanted you guys to see how it's done here in Japan and how those parts ended up on your car when you got them either from Japan or if you're gonna buy them and ship them over and bolt them on so that you get the same handling and feeling as the pros do over here. So while Yodusei's staff is, cut, is preparing and cutting up all the knuckles, I figured we would take a little bit of a look at his D1 car. When did you say this car has to be ready by? By April. April? 26th. April 26th, this car has to be built. Dude, I'd be sweating if I was here. <laughs> Very cool. So you're going 2J. Uh, you've got a TTI sequential in here I saw. Very, very cool. And obviously full welding cage. And this is D1 spec, right? Yes. Yeah. Are you going rear mount radiator as well? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Very, very cool. Oh, we got a nice winter's quick change diff in there too. Which is good to see. Man, this thing is, looks like a rear wise fab. Are you going front wise fab? No, we're just gonna use the reverse knuckles. Oh, you're gonna use your knuckles? Yeah. Very cool. Sick. Man, this is crazy. You got a lot of work to get done before April. <laughs> It'll be cool to see this thing. We'll, we'll keep you guys updated, yeah? Whenever you guys are doing big work on this, I'll come around and shoot some clips for everyone. Very cool. I like the, the way the cage is tucked in here and welded into the top of the struts like that. It's a really nice touch. The, the seating position is good too with the pedal box there. See how much further back the wheel is? and how much further back this seat is. Normally, this is the biggest issue for me in the S15, is this, because you can't get your seat low enough, but I guess with you, you're gonna be sitting all the way back here now, right? Yeah. Wow, that's a huge difference. That's so good. This cage is amazing. Really good work, especially for Japan. This is some of the best cage work I've seen. All tied in everywhere in the chassis. Really, really nice. This is gonna be a sick car, dude. Can't wait to see you uh, get the dub. Get the big dub at D1. <laughs> Sponsors, sign up. <laughs> get on board. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be a really cool build. I'm not gonna lie though, I'm a bit sad to see another 2J going in a S15 though. But this is literally the recipe for a good competitive car. S15, 2J, bulletproof, bulletproof drivetrain. These things handle and they are proven to be really competitive cars. So we've got two knuckles already bolted into a left and a right jig. And you can see that they've got heat protecting stuff over the spindles here to protect any like, you know, splatter or anything affecting those, which is really important for the hubs. 
and then you can see the position in the jig of where the end piece is going to end up. So dropped and shortened and uh, what's actually really good is how well they've cleaned these surfaces and uh, I guess they're going to build up there and then connect it in here as well. So it'll be interesting to see how they go through and make these things strong. So as you can see they're using a MIG welder. They find that this gets the best penetration with the air chassis knuckles. And uh, there's not really much of a worry with any, like too much heat and stuff. As in with the JZX knuckles that they make, they have to use TIG and control the temperature because the ball joint is in the knuckle. So have to be very careful with that. You say, have you ever had a knuckle break on you? Like the, well, after you've welded it, have you ever had one like just, you know, break off? Never. Never? Never. Yeah. Good to know. And that's the first knuckle done. It's gonna need cleaning up, but that's it. Man, this guy is a machine. Done. On to the next one. At first I thought it was kind of uh, odd that he was welding in a cooking tray. But it actually makes a lot of sense because it's catching all the, the splatter and the sparks that are flying off. And it makes it way easier to keep everything clean. You can see he's also got like the welding cloth down too. And he has this MIG set up to pretty much spit out that wire so fast. He's smashing through these. Let's have a look at his uh, setup. I love the welders here in Japan. They're like crazy. Mark III 350 inverter. I wonder who makes this. Welders in Japan, they still look like really old, but they're such good pieces of hardware. And then this is a feeder up the top. Very interesting. See all the slag and everything the tray that he catches. And then I guess that's another one done. Wow. Man, that's only been like... I'm gonna time this guy and see how long it takes him to make a knuckle. Once he takes him out of the jig, he's not actually done. So that's my bad there. You can see there just how much more he has stacked onto that. And he's definitely got good penetration because that thing is glowing hot and it's already been sitting there for quite a while. Wow. Filled that thing in beautifully. No wonder these have never had, like, like never broken before. So uh, you see there, he's now gonna go through and strengthen that up as well. And this is the official brand of the knuckles, by the way, Reverse Knuckle. And you've probably seen these, um, these pictures here and these promos were actually in the Drift Hangoku magazine. Um, and they keep going in there from time and time, but you can see they got a full range. It's the Sylvia ones that they were doing today. They got the Skyline ones, the JZX series, and the Sora series, which is all pretty cool. Every single seam on Rusei's D1 car has been stitch welded. Trying to make sure I don't touch anything just because anything that's been cleaned, I don't want to uh, put my fingerprints on there and cause any rust, but literally every seam all over this body, stitch welded, all in here too. Look at that. Thing's gonna feel rigid as if it wasn't for the welding cage, that's for sure. Very, very cool. Look, he's going full fuel safe. Man. Oh boy, I'm gonna have to build a competition car soon, I think. Something on this level. When we get into FD, I need to have one ready to go. Oh boy. And like the way it's all been boxed in here too. So good. Oh, the quick release mounts too. The body panels. These are so good. Hey Duce, I heard a rumor that you used to be an idol. Hey? I heard a rumor you used to be an idol here in Japan. <laughs> a male idol. That's like here, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that he's finished welding them, he's now cleaning them up with an angle grinder. And man, these edges are looking so good. Big difference. Oh, 
He's tapering the edge and everything. Wow. Looks clean. Wow. Even going as far as cleaning up and tapering the edges for the ball joint. And now that's it. All finished. I had to get a glove on because these things are still boiling hot. But look how incredible that looks. Especially when you put some paint on that, that's going to look like it was meant to be like that. It was casted like that. Very, very cool. The welds look really good as well. Looks like a very strong knuckle. That's so cool. So a pair have now been finished and as you can see they look amazing. But what I want to do is show you guys the difference. And for mock-up purposes, Nusei has a complete stock factory OEM knuckle on his car. And I wanted to show you guys just the huge difference here. So if we try to like line that up up there and you guys get this kind of, it's pretty rough but I'm going to try and line up the spindles. But you kind of get an idea just by looking at that like how much it is shorter. And then also just by looking at these two, look how much it gets dropped too. Very, very different. If I try to like balance that there, you can really get a good idea. It's crazy. And Luce, what's like your recommended setup for these knuckles? Like uh, extended lower arms or rack end extensions or spaces? My recommend is, I think you, you don't need a extended lower arm. Just okay. use a standard lower arm. Okay. This, yep, and uh, use a standard pilot ends, yep. And uh, I think you should have changed the <laughs> better to change the, the tie, tie rod, rods. yeah, like an IKEA formula, okay, Max. yep, any brands, okay, okay. And uh, what about rack end spaces? The rack spaces, uh, I recommend to use the Eurasis Gominoa. Oh, just the little like yeah. washer kind of thing, the little spacer, yeah. tiny spacer. I think this is the best for this knuckle. Okay. Uh, for other knuckles, I don't know. But okay. For this knuckle, yeah. That's this, the best solutions. The best. So it's simple then. Yeah, really simple. It's for like beginners and like for start putting new knuckles. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to spend uh, money, so. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. What about caster arms? Uh, like adjustable yeah. standard caster arms? Yeah, you have to change it like uh, this but the tension arm. My recommend is use the straight type. To use the straight one, not the curved ones. Yeah, because curved one uh, sometimes have like a loose problem. Some tension rods. Yeah. Time it loose. They get loose, yeah. Get loose, uh, okay. My recommend is just use the straight type. Yeah. Like yep. like any any type like this. The straight color. kind. Okay. And put some color in it. Put some color in it? Yeah. So it can go more farther. So Oh the color you mean, not yeah. color. Okay. So the you space it out so it's more this way, the yes. ball joint than closer. Okay. Yes. Interesting. And it's gonna be enough. If you're gonna wear like a 265, you have to change to the carb tie. Would anyone run a 265 in the front though? Is some that people do. Some people do? Yeah, but wow. I usually wear the 265 yeah. 17. Okay, yeah. Yeah, for my like, uh, practice cars and yeah. my street cars. Okay. For this, uh, we're gonna put new knuckles. Mm -hmm. So we might be changing, but uh, for this knuckle, just the standard is okay. Standard is okay. Yes. All right. Well, there you guys go. So really simple setup. What about camber? Do you recommend anything with camber? Like obviously, like sh do you want the maximum camber or you, uh, that's not necessary? If you're gonna uh, use the standard raw arm, mm -hmm. I recommend to put camber. Camber. Max. Max. Yep. So that that's normally about seven degrees, isn't it? Yeah, yeah seven point five. Huh? Yeah. What about toe? Any toe in the front? Toe is I usually use this total eight mini. Okay, eight millimeter toe. Toe out. Toe out. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, it changes when you go to the track. Of course, so. yeah, yeah. Different tracks, different surfaces, and but yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. Well, thank you so much, Jose. So, for anyone that's getting into drifting, you want to know how to set up your air chassis, a good knuckle. Um, head to Booster. I'll put the link in the description. Um, so you can head to his website and you can buy them. They get shipped straight from Japan. He handles them himself and they will literally be in this factory and room here being welded. And we can also uh, worldwide shipping. Yep. So, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. 
He's uh, obviously uh, an aspiring D1GP driver. He's going to be competing this year. So look out for him as well. And uh, I think it'll be great if you guys want to support him and see him compete as well. It'll be super, super cool. But uh, yeah, I love like just talking to you guys, like the Japanese, like, I mean, obviously drifting kind of was invented here. I don't know if that's true or fact, but they say it was. And to be able to talk to you guys and see what you guys are doing here, because like this is kind of like the basic setup that everyone uses here in Japan, right? Yeah. yeah. Just simple, reliable, yes. and uh, generally doesn't break unless you hit something. Yeah. <laughs> Should be okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did a lot of tests, like ABC jumps. Yeah. We did like like a lot of tests, more than three hundred, maybe it's one thousand. We did a lot. Wow. <laughs> It should be okay. Should be okay? What about concrete walls? If you concrete. hit a concrete wall? Just a tie rod. Just a tie rod? Yeah. Wow. That's so good. Knuckle never, Knuckle never, never broke. Yeah, yeah. That's really good. All right. Well, there you guys go. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Ooh, I'm not going to pick that up with my bare hand because it is boiling hot. That's what <laughs> the gloves for. <laughs> but Luce, thank you so much for showing thank us you, this um, today. I know a lot of companies generally wouldn't do this, but uh, there you guys go. I'll get you to have one more look at how clean that is. And we'll leave it at there, I think. All right, guys. Thanks, Ruse. So currently just cruising with Ruse. We're going to go head to his little workshop, see what he's got going on there. We're going to hang out. I'm helping him right now with his D1GP uh, driver proposal book that uh, he gives to sponsors and stuff. So uh, we'll probably be doing a bunch of uh, paperwork stuff with him. But uh, man, it's so good. Like seeing young people like Nusa, just so you know, he's only 24 years old and he's going straight into D1GP. He's definitely accomplishing a lot and I wish I was, uh, I was uh, accomplishing the same things at that age. <laughs> Anyways, we'll pick things up once we get there. So just arrived at Nusa's garage. I love this place so much. There's just so much crammed into this little space, but this is a new addition here. This thing is, uh, <laughs> Is this safe? Uh -huh. Anze, is this safe? Welcome! <laughs> so cold! This is his, uh, I'm gonna call it his hot box because he sets up like, how many electric heaters are here? Like two, three? And this is the door, you just pull the plastic shut and then we sit down and we, we talk about business. <laughs> it's like 40 degrees here. This is amazing, dude. You made this yourself? With my friends. <laughs> <laughs> we just built like two, three days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Not than I won't stand up too fast because I'll probably hit my head on the roof and it'll all come down. <laughs> this is cool, dude. I like it. All right. Okay. We're going uh, <laughs> to... We're going to get to... Bit. This is a white flat screen TV. I've never seen a white flat screen TV. <laughs> How old is that? like more than 10 years. 10 years? Oh, well, dude, I've never seen a white flat screen. Toshiba? Yeah. Wow, that's old. Anyways, we're going to get to business and I'll pick it up after that. I'll probably wrap up the vlog then. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, just got home and I really hope you enjoyed today's video and that little special insight into what goes into making the typical go-to setup here in Japan for drifting. Um, especially getting that advice on like how to get the car to handle well and use those knuckles um, I think is very valuable for a lot of people and especially if you're getting into drifting even if you're you know just starting out or you know you're getting competitive it's still a really good setup and to actually know like the you know camber and toe settings and stuff like that for the front end is really really helpful so hope you found it informative and you enjoyed it also it's just so cool to be able to help out Ruse and do whatever I can there because he's a young dude getting into D1GP, which is huge. And uh, it's it's actually kind of rare these days to see that. So it's really cool to be able to uh, help him wherever I can. So guys, check out the links in the description if you're after an angle kit for your car. Like I said, does S chassis, he does JZX100 and JZX chassis, as well as Skyline. So if you need any of that stuff, uh, go check out his website, links are in the description, as well as just keep an eye out for him on social media. I really think he's gonna be like the next big like driver uh, to hit D1GP. Um, he's definitely got a lot of potential. So for that guys, smash that like button, write us a comment and subscribe. Don't forget, merch drop is like in under 24 hours now. So don't sleep on that, head to summit.net and make sure you uh, set your alarms with the countdown and everything so you don't miss out on when that stuff goes live. It's some legit stuff and uh, it's going to sell out really, really fast. So thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Peace out. Ciao, Mata.